to invite yang amat berbahagia Tun Musa Hitam to the podium to deliver his lecture. This silence is much a sign of anticipation. But I want to tell you frankly that tonight I feel somewhat out of place as well as being out of date. Why do I say so? It is because I took the trouble to think and think and think how to deal with tonight's subject. After all the trouble, thinking and thinking and thinking, I was listening to the two previous speakers and that they actually did not really tackle the issues in hand, but that they were explaining <laughs> the issues at hand to them from their own respective official stand. This is not a criticism that need you to give it back to me. But this is just an observation. I very often nowadays feel somewhat Frustrated. I'm frustrated because given a special opportunity that we are being given to discuss, to exchange views on particular issues, we don't seem to be able to tackle of it head on. Yet, we keep on trying to apologize as to why this or that could not be done. And this is normally account accompanied by various promises. And I want to tell you, my life has been long. I've been there, facing all sorts of issues. And I can tell you, each time when I listen to VVIPs and people with authority, it seems that the issues are put up again and again, and that tackling issues had always been done independently of each other, whereas issues are always interlinked with others, especially in the issue of running a country. Now, some of you who know me, poor Musa, 
He's always been wanting to be prime minister, except for Dr. Mahathir. Don't laugh. It's serious. Issues faced by us are numerous. At infinitum, in other words, it goes on and on and never ends. Well, this is what we are all about. <laughs> but in Malaysia, I think we could and should focus on particular issues, list them. Number one, what are the issues? Number two, what are the ones that are of importance in terms of numbering. Number three is that we must understand how to treat these issues, to accept the issues. And number four, to look at the possible consequences that we decide to take action on and be prepared to face these consequences. We are here tonight to focus on the issue of resetting the Malaysian economy, very precisely. Resetting the Malaysian economy, which by itself means that we are not quite happy with the current economic situation as to wish to reset it. That we must accept to be the sentiment, the knowledge, the wish of those who are present here. Well, okay, we can say something wrong here, is there, and everywhere. The public gives on issue, uh, throw issues to us, to us, to, not to, to us, me, no. To them, maybe there's one representative only here. <clears throat> Issues relating to the eggs, egg, egg, tello, tello. Every day, the issue of the egg price, every day, through TV, through radio, through discussions, Whenever we talk, again and again and again. Well, these are the tiny ones. The big ones are issuing or issues relating to huge projects that involve not hundreds, but thousands of ringgit. Yet, talked about Yet, as time goes by, we realize it had been mishandled rather than handled in accordance to the legal law demands in trying to implement the projects as intended to be. We can list the issues relating to economy. We understand that it is difficult. We understand also that it will take time for the government to act on it. And the beautiful thing, not beautiful, rather maybe interesting thing about this new government is that indeed it is a new government so that when the minister stands before us, he could easily say, and accepted by everybody, that the government would make sure, the government have ideas, the government would be able to adjust to implement 
and this is genuine. Acceptable indeed. But I can assure you, Rafizi, my son maybe, I can assure you, at most, the public will give you three months or six months. After that, they're not going to be polite with you. And it is very difficult for anybody who has been used to be the opposition finding out all the faults in society and government, very difficult to turn yourself from opposition to government. For example, I drew attention of very important minister, high official in the government. I said, please, when you get up these days, don't say, I will not tolerate this thing or that other thing. I'll make sure you'll be caught. We will ensure this and the other will be implemented. But these are the only things that had been done by those in government. As time goes by again and again, these are left behind. Town, uh, time, oh, sorry. <laughs> year in, year out, until next elections. Now, I'm not saying anything out of the ordinary. I can only say one thing, that indeed the issues raised by the minister are the ones which he faces as much as his government is facing. And one of the problems really it's not economic. It's not even be social or educational or anything. It's politics and government, my friend. It's politics in government that is determining the success or failure of your promises to the rest of the country. Very good explanations are given, for example, by our distinguished speaker. I must tease him by telling you publicly, Rice, you just took the opportunity of this so-called panel discussion to pour out your wishes and hopes and aspirations in this particular institution of government, i.e. parliament. All the things you express, uh, express to us especially in aspects relating to the judiciary, the law, regulations, as well as expenditure that you are beholden to in order to progress, and your wish to be separate from the rest of the government and to be independent have been talked about for quite some time. But it happens that you are the only one who's very, very vocal it all the time. Yet you were with the Prime Minister recently. I hope 
you at least have got agreement by the Prime Minister. Okay, I will look into it. Come on. Man. The time of looking into it should not be allowed. No more, no more, no more. You, the new government, you are in it now. Get on with it. All the issues in the economy, in social issues, economic issues, social issues, political issues even, government, these have been talked about again and again. How do you tackle it? How are you going to be sure that two years later, it is still not done? At the end of the year, the government falls. And a new group, people will say, okay, I will look into it again. Now, very comforting assurance by Mr. Minister saying that the political situation is stable. No, I'm not quite sure. <laughs> really, really. I'm, not, I'm, I'm laughing, but I'm serious. Hmm? We wonder what is going to happen any time. Certain groups are with you, yet not with you. Certain individuals promise one thing or the other. It goes on and on, but I, can't, I would like to tell you, in the history of Malaysian politics, I can tell you, We never could be sure what is around the corner. What am I talking about? I'm talking about politics. I'm talking about politics. I'm talking politics because it is politics that would be able to help you to reset the economy. Actually, to begin with, we need to remind ourselves that in spite, in spite of all other issues, non-political, it is actually politics and government first that need resetting. They need resetting. They need Revision, they need to be looked into. Not enough. Need to be acted on. One issue after another. And put the political and governmental issues together. And this is where the reform starts, not the other way around. Now, when I was sitting down there, I was conscious of time. I was grumbling a bit that when I was asked to come, I was going to attend, to attend a discussion, a panel discussion. Wow, my God, I said, this is an opportunity. I would sit up here with Rafizi by my side and uh, Rais opening ceremony and then we exchange views and then we open it for discussion and questions. That was what I expected to be. 
And and I want to tell you, this is an old 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 man, or orang tua. I am the orang tua. The orang tua is doing blatering, blate, blate, blate. This is difficult to understand. Blate means what do you say in English? The blate, the orang tua ni. That's what I am doing. My blatering is that. <laughs> you know, you talk about opportunity to exchange views, to have this. Then we sit down. After that, we come back. We go home. The idea of panel discussion is good, but that question and answer is not here. So please do it again. If you do it, do it better. Better, you do it more, but less formal, sir. You cannot <laughs> claim this gathering to be rakyat oriented. No, no, no. They would not dare come here. It is opportunity for those who are who, who could be to come here. The potential of this gathering like this is huge. Mr. Speaker, you did come to me. We did talk about it. We require, require, we, we accepted the fact that the population, especially the young, need this exposure. But they don't need lecturing, being told what to do. That's why we need to have dialogue opportunity for them. I'm told those are the young ones. For them, sir, can I tell you something? I, I'm, I'm sorry. Blete, blete, blete. I'm, I'm growling about it. But I think I must take the opportunity, opportunity here Rude as I might sound behind you, I can assure you, I'm not like that, but I am not trying to shame anybody on this particular occasion. Get on with it, number one, Mr. Minister. Get on with it. Get on with it. Don't tell us. I'm thinking about it. No, we think about it. You have been thinking. Go on with it. On everything you talk, talk about, within six months, we should be happy or sad. Nothing has happened or have happened. Number one. Number two, get on with the idea of getting the young to be together with us some of us to appear behind uh, in front together with them to exchange views listening to them you cannot imagine how out of date we are how much out of touch we are in many issues and it is from them they can educate us and expose us about what this country is all about. That's all. Thank you. God bless.